Now we got one of my former teammates and one of your former teammates. You're right. Who's going to give us a little different inside than, than Frank Cervelli. This guy played 491 games. I can't believe he didn't ball lick his way to 500, which we got to get the reasoning for that. <laughs> and the only guy we've had on that's drafted later than me, he was in the ninth round, 264th overall, <laughs> Pierre Alexander Paranto. Mago, thanks for joining us, buddy. What's up, What's up, buddy? No problem, buddy. PA, What's welcome up, to Missing Thank Curfew. You. Thanks, you. I, uh, going, PA? I got to know, so great. just right off the hop here, I got to know PA when he was, fuck, he couldn't even speak English. And your English is pretty good now, actually. It gets a little sloppy when we're out having wine together, but um, <laughs> fuck, we played together at World Juniors in 2002 in Halifax. And I remember you and Bouchard came on our team. I don't know if you played with him in junior. Did you? I think you did. Yeah, I did, yeah. Uh, you two yeah. fucking oh, yeah, yeah. Frenchmen came on our team and absolutely lit it up. Um, and then I remember, man, we I, we lost in the final, but we had such a good finals. You and me, we were playing, fuck, we were playing on the same line, scoring power play goals together, just fucking lighting the lamp in in Halifax. So it's nice to uh, nice to bring you in the studio, pal. I just remember watching those World Junior hey. and the Mago. Did did you use like a wooden stick back then or something, Mago? Did you use a wooden All stick? Right. All right. <laughs> yeah, I was one of the last ones. He was doing the like, half day job. You remember that? Oh, yeah. I'm like, I <laughs> was big in the queue. That was big in the queue that year. I turned on World Juniors. I'm like, who the fuck's this broad toe kid? He's drafted ninth round. He's got 190 points in the fucking Quebec League already, and he's using a wood stick. <laughs> <laughs> and he's looking at himself in the glass the whole game. What's going on with that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some things never change, trust me. Hey, just talk about that World oh. Junior experience with Uppy and Halifax as a French Canadian guy playing that. Because I remember watching that, Mago, and, and the atmosphere and 2 twos killing guys. What was it like for you? Yeah, 2 oh, Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was great. Um, you know, playing World Junior was, was a dream come true. I was a real, like you said, I was drafted in the ninth round. It was all surrounded by first round pick. It was a really long shot to make the team, but I had... Uh, I had such a good start to the season that year at 19 years old. I finally got a shot. And like Uppy said, playing with uh, Pierre Marc Bouchard, I was already in the show, and we had a good ke good chemistry going. So that that helped me make that team, and I had a really good tournament. I was, uh, you know, I was a dark horse, but I uh, I played pretty well and kind of put me on the map for a bit. I still play. I play. I still play seven years in the AHL, but it did put me on the map. <laughs> <laughs> I got done. One of my questions is about fucking. You play the American League. Bro. I was gonna ask him that too, Ob. So I was like, "Gee, that's a long time to grind it out in the minors." Oh well, yeah. I mean, there is one thing though that we all have in common here that not a lot of fucking NHL guys can say now is that we've all played years in the minors. I mean, I have four. I have four or five like on and off in the minors. So I mean, it's. No matter if you're first overall pick or, or a first rounder or not, yeah. we fucking we strung it out in the, you know, for in sure, the, in the ditches. I guess I went, we paid our dues. We, we paid, paid our dues, dues paid boys. Our dues. I went three years they, in the. Oh, what you call it? The iron lung. The, the, the fucking bus? iron. The, the, bus, the iron, iron lung. I went three years in the jungle with the mago, <laughs> and then two years late in the jungle. Oh. But but mags, one thing I always because I remember like up you said when I met you, fella, you were, you know, this little good looking French kid with swagger, but you couldn't speak English very well. I remember me and you, we both are rookie year in Cincinnati. We didn't start in the lineup. How hard was it for you coming out of the Quebec League into a league back then where guys were probably wanting to really take your head off because you were a skilled French guy? It must have been an adjustment for you in, in dealing with that. Yeah, I remember that was a really tough year. Such an adjustment, you know. Didn't speak the language very well. <laughs> I don't know if you remember me and Joe Perot. We were struggling, both of us. Uh, but I, I was such a social butterfly. I was like, there's no fucking way I'm not going to learn the language. I can't deal with this. <laughs> you know? So like six months to a year, you know, you're, you were there with me those, in those years. I kind of, I got better and better, learned the language. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to have fun with the boys. I didn't want to miss out. <laughs> so <laughs> that really motivated me to, to get going, learn the language. And uh, the second year, I thought I was going to play more. I thought it was good, but it was a lockout year, remember? Yeah, I do. And then Kunitz and Lupo came in, came in, and I was playing actually less than my first year. I was losing my shit. <laughs> and it took, it took, it was uh, the, the first two years, and since you were really rough, but then when the when we moved to Portland, that's really uh, when things took off for me. That's when I really found my game and found my confidence in that league. But it was uh, it was definitely a big transition for a, for a French skill guy, like you said. <laughs> It's funny you say that, PA, because that <clears throat> that lockout year for me was, and and maybe why it took you a little bit longer to get to the league, because like you said, you didn't get an opportunity to really play a lot of minutes there, and it, it kind of hampered you. Where for me, there wasn't many good defensemen in the Ducks organization. Thank fuck. 
But like, no, that, there wasn't. No, right? Mark Popovic, who I love Popper, but I was like, all right, Popper's pretty good, but he's not much better than me. I can hang in here. But that next year, that next year in Portland, like, talk about Zen and Konopka because I we know how much you know of a great teammate he was. Talk about how much he meant to you that year in Portland, because I think he he really helped you deal with everything and gave you more room to play. He's just a great teammate and an absolute beauty. Yeah, he was he was huge for me. He was. <laughs> I'm scared to use the the word mentor and Zenon Kanapka <laughs> in the same sentence, but I'm going to have to here. <laughs> he was a mentor for me. He was huge. He, he did make a lot of room for me on the ice. Uh, he was protecting me at any any cause and even off the ice too. We were great friends. We lived together, and he was uh, he was big for me. He really uh, he really helped me get to the next level. And I hate to admit it, but he really made me a little tougher too, <laughs> which, I mean- which kind of helped. He made it to the to the to the NHL for sure. The fact that he never got a fucking DUI living out in Old Orchard Beach that whole year was a shock in itself. But <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing about the story about uh, Zenit Konopka. So we're in the conference finals, Mago. You remember this. We're in the conference finals. Yeah. We lose game one to Hershey. And obviously our mentality then was let's go get in a brawl. So I go out and try to fight somebody. Konopka goes out and try to fight somebody. Gillies goes out and tries to fight somebody. So Konopka had left the room. We come in and Kevin Dineen, your boy Dino's like, you know, you got to lose with class and win with class and we didn't lose with class. And then Tim Brent stayed up and stood up and said like, yeah, it's a fucking joke what O'Brien and Kanopka did and fucking Gillies. Like, we got to be pros here. So Knopper and PA were living together. So they catch wind of it. I'm back at my house and I live in the same condo as Tim Brent. And I'm having a glass of wine with my girlfriend Anna at the time. And I hear a... <laughs> and it's fucking Kanopka and PA. Kanopka's like, where's Brenter? What fucking condo does he live in? I'm fucking fighting him. I'm like, calm down. Calm down. First of all, you can't fight our second line center in the Eastern Conference Finals. And yeah. you just can't fight anyone. Have a glass of wine. But that was the type of guy he was, eh, PA? Yeah, he didn't take no for an answer. He, yeah. really, got, he really got us there, though, you know? Well, they, and they had User, the... You, yeah, no, he was... I mean, that year in Portland... That playoff alone got me into the play, got me my opportunity to make the NHL when we went to the conference yes. finals and yeah. we were, you know, we were so close. We would have played Uppy in the fucking Calder Cup finals, which would have been a good story yeah. to tell. But. We would have destroyed them. They lost in four, didn't they? We lost in six. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you what happened. I'll tell you what happened is fucking. They caught, six. This is what happened. We went out too many nights. Hershey has that stupid. I know what happened. You don't have to go there. Well, no, let's we had it. a bender. Let's let's Listen, it. after our third round, we swept. We we swept the first round, second round, and then we won in five in the third round. Pekka Rene was our goalie. He won. I think he won eleven of twelve games. We had Toots, Weber, me. Uh, we all got sent down and, and played. So anyway, we get to the finals. First two games are in in Milwaukee. We split them. Then there's a thirteen day break in between games two and three going to Hershey because they had some stupid circus there. So we literally had like, yeah. we had almost 11, you said, you said 13, 13, 13 days. days. We had 11 yeah. days off in between the thing. So we finally Welcome get the there. That's, yeah, that's, we that's get dangerous. there night before game three. And this is how cheap the minor leagues are is we flew commercial uh, the night before the game and we land in some fucking Gettysburg and we eat McDonald's at like 11.30 p.m. We take it out, a two hour bus ride in. Our hotel is, they don't ready to check us in, anything. So we literally play game, you know, we could have got there three or four days before, stay in a hotel, get accumulated to the rink, you go meet some girls, whatever the case may be. No, that's fly in the night before, fucking cheap fucks. Um, so anyway, then they spanked us the next two games and then we went home, won one, came back, lost, lost in six. But, Anyway, to answer your story, uh, Getze and Pears and Pens, right, all came down. For game seven. For game seven. I mean, if you guys got through, it would have been a... If we would have got through, we, it would have been a I hell don't know. of a You series. guys had a good team, but if we would have... Yeah, they came down for game seven and we, we lost in overtime, but I took the skate in the face. But Mago, do you remember... So yeah. you, you talk about... Oh, yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> you talk about the jungle, right? So the third year, me and Mago are back down in the jungle the third year. We got Kanopka, me and him. And our room is whatever, but so we talked to Dino... We're, we're roommates on the road. You remember we're roommates on the road, Mago? Yeah. So I bring my little weed fucking whatever. I, I bring my little like, I don't think it was like a one hitter back then. You remember the ones you got? A little cigarette. But. A little cigarette thing. So me and Mago, we get <laughs> yeah. in the room. I, I put the towels down on the fucking door and everything. And we hit the one hitter. Every, didn't like 15 minutes later, PA be like, I hear someone open. I hear someone. It's the coach, I think. It's the coach. She's like, you know, and we would just fucking die laughing. Do you remember that, Mago? <laughs> 
<laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that was good. Oh. So so PA, we uh, on this on this panel here, we've got a lot of teams that we've covered. We've played. I played on seven. Obi, you're on six. Hazy, you got what? You got a half dozen. You're yeah, at five. Got, uh, Chicago, Boston, Florida, <laughs> New Jersey, Pittsburgh. Yeah, five. So I think there's only really, <laughs> and we might have touched on this earlier, but there's I was only on a two year plan everywhere. Wait. I had two year plans. That was my. Me thing. too. I was on a two year plan everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Until they <laughs> really get to know who you are. <laughs> until they way out of the city. <laughs> Just like girlfriends too. I'm good for like. <laughs> I could I could date her for like two months and then they really start to see who you are and then uh, anyway. So really, you look yeah. around the NHL. <laughs> Mike Sillinger, I played with Silly Balls. This guy had the biggest nuts on planet Earth. But he also played for like 11 or 12 teams. We called him Silly Balls because his nuts were so big. Um, and he scored, this is a crazy stat. He scored 10 or more goals with 10 different NHL teams, which is, think about that, it's all time. Usually you get traded at the deadline. You play like, you know, you play a dozen games in playoffs. You don't ever get to 10 goals. This guy actually, yeah. you know, he came in and made yeah. a statement on all the teams he played for and a great teammate. Great guy. Uh, and then Lee Stepniak. I played with Lee. I'm sure we all did, actually. I yeah. played with Stemper. Yeah, we all yeah. played with him. <laughs> if you played in the NHL yeah, from 2007 to... Lee at some point. <laughs> yeah. But then, PA, then it's you, buddy. I think, how many do you got? I know. I got eight. I got eight teams. I got Chicago, Rangers, Islanders, uh, Avalanche, Montreal, Toronto, Jersey, and Nashville, which I didn't play much there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but thank God, thank God you did go to Nashville because it allowed me and Mac L to come in for the Stanley Cup Finals. And oh my God! Okay, sorry to change subjects. <laughs> the best warm up I've seen in National Hockey League history is we go in for Game Three, Game Three and Four. Mago doesn't think he's playing Game Three. Well, he gets the call, he's in. So me and Mac L are like, we got to go for warm up to see this guy because the rink was already full of fans, right? So we go down, and mago has got the hair flowing, and I think it was Pax was just started goalie, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. there was no fucking getting Pex warm up. Mango was coming in, short side, titty, <laughs> wing, wing, wing. Hey, he's got to warm himself up. I got to uh, warm up. I, I, was like, like, I barely slept the, barely slept the <laughs> night before. I was like to Mac, I'm like, that's, a, that's the best warm up I've seen in National Hockey League history. His hair was flowing and he went seven for seven, top shelf. So. PA, talk about none of us, none of us guys here got to play in New York, although we all love the city. Um, you were pretty young oh. in there. You had a good tour guide with our boy Andy Mackell. Um, Mackell, baby. Yeah. How was your experience playing in the Big Apple? I know a lot of our fans, but probably a lot of our fans haven't even been to New York before. But uh, the city is awesome. Playing at MSG is badass. Can you mm -hmm. can you touch on that? Your experience there? Yeah, yeah. There's nothing like playing at MSG. <laughs> really, it's such a big deal. You know, all the concert, the stars that have been there, like. I remember my first few games. We had such a such a squad. I think we had like Jager, Straka, Longquist, uh, Shanahan. <laughs> like it was a tough lineup to crack. That kind of that kind of cost me a little bit too. That's why I stayed in Hartford for so long. We had like we had a bunch of Gabarik. We had a bunch of stud up like up front. Uh, but playing there was amazing. I remember hanging out with Macal. He was showing me around. Like he was taking taking care of me, and we had we had a blast there. But I didn't play long. I, only, I think I only played like. 40 games or something, just the, the second part of one year. And then I signed with the Islanders for a few years after that. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about, uh, like, what was it like playing in your hometown? Like, how was that experience? Do you feel that there was more pressure on you and that you had to deal with the distractions? Like, I played in Boston, and it didn't go that well for me. I felt like I I might have been going out a little too much here and there. But no. do you feel like no. that, that, that experience of no. playing in your hometown was, uh, like, a thrill for you? It was a thrill, but it, it, it turned into a nightmare pretty quick. <laughs> you know, it's it's never it's never that easy. I couldn't stay healthy that year too for some reason. My head, like, I had a big concussion. Uh, Terry Ann was the coach, which was was not the easiest. Uh, it, it wasn't the best combo. <laughs> Let's put it this way. <laughs> uh, but no, it was it's it was still fun to put that jersey on. You know, like grew up watching him. Like you know, every day I was watching hockey. Like I was a huge fan growing up. And it was still special, although it was my worst year of my career, uh, you know, like pr like production wise and, you know, health wise too. Yeah, not even close too. So, but it was still special. <laughs> I still shares that moment. And, you know, no one's going to be able to take that away from me ever that, you know, playing that jersey and played in my hometown for a full year. It was amazing. 
Yeah. It was awesome. I I enjoyed it too. I, I mean, my start to that year could have been one of the most embarrassing starts ever. With, and then the, <laughs> even the final stat line with two goals and three assists, making two and a half million dollars was probably the highest yeah, for a point. That Yeah, that's tough. I don't think anyone had a more rough. Like I know you say it was rough, but Scott Gomez's experience in Montreal was, was something special. He didn't score. He didn't score for a full yeah, year. But he was making fucking <laughs> eight, nine <laughs> bananas. <laughs> he didn't score for he a full year. He didn't score a goal for seven months. <laughs> Yeah, he had a whole nation chasing him down. It was fucking crazy. And the thing about Gomer, I was, when, 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 Mago, when Gomer was going through that, I was in Tampa, I believe, and I went over with Brad Lukowicz to Gomer's house to have some, because he wouldn't leave the house. He's like, I'm not going for dinner if you yeah, guys want to come I, over and come see I, me. And I think he probably had some weed over there. I so think, I was like, I'm coming with you, Luke. I want to get I baked. Think, that was such a big deal. I think we all remember where we were when was when that was happening. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, right? You're like it's like a uh, like a, a disaster yeah. event. Disaster. Yeah. And and the thing about Gomer is like he's still one of the best I ever seen to come back. Well, Mango, you could be in this, but when you come back and get it and skate up through the neutral zone, so I'm like, yeah, he's not scoring, but fuck, he's still looking good. He's still looking decent out there. Yeah, not <laughs> I, you, do, you don't judge a, a guy by his goals. You judge a guy by the amount of time he's got the fuck on his plate. He was really good at that. He was, <laughs> he was really good at that. He always had that fucking thing on his stick, Bagel. Yeah. Uh, I I was actually like, I was trying to play like him for a while, especially when I was in Long Island and Denver. I was like, I want to be Scott going. I just go get the puck behind the net, just be patient, a little sauce in the middle. That was amazing. Those nope, were the years. Nobody got the blue line better than you. Pulled up. Looked at yourself in the glass and went cross ice sauce better than you <laughs> over that offensive blue line. That's when I remember you told me you're like, I think I'm done, Holmes. I'm like, why? He's like, ah, they they back check too hard. But you did say that seriously. Yeah. That's how much the game changed yeah. on you, right? Like you would get that line before yeah. and you have oh, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When 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 I heard the term track back for the first <laughs> time in my career, I knew I was done. <laughs> That team checks well. Yeah, Track. yeah. Track. We back check as a team. I'm like, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a fucking beauty. I oh, miss it's you. Unbelievable. So, do you feel like you're welcome yeah. back in the Bell Center, like as an alumni right now, uh, when things open up? Like, like a Montreal Canadian alumni has got to be a pretty cool thing. Um, can you just walk just right in? The puck in, first game. Yeah. Can you walk right in there and do what you want? <laughs> grab a you know a bottle of champagne. Start you know being PA that that we know. Do you think you'd be welcome back there? <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> Mark Bergevin did buy me out. <laughs> 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 yeah. Then I went to Toronto and scored twenty. Yeah. yeah see. <laughs> yeah. See, that's two two juicy but, alumni no, to think, just. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd be welcome. I, Hell yeah! I think Mark Bergevin, like you said, is, I think Mark Bergevin is an awesome guy. I think yeah. he's a good character guy. I think he's well appreciated. That I got nothing against him. I did. I did deserve to get buy out that year. <laughs> to I, be completely I, honest. But, uh, <laughs> I uh, no, I, I think I'd be welcome there. Yeah, and yeah. eventually after COVID, I'm planning on making some trips to Montreal and go enjoy some hockey games in Montreal again for sure. Let's talk about your time in Toronto. PA. Oh, sorry, brother. Let me go real quick. Yeah, then no, you'll go next. Yeah, all right. So PA called. PA is like, I'm signing in Toronto. I said, okay, I go to Loops. I go to Loops. Hey, PA signing in Toronto. And and when we were in Cincy, you and Loops didn't really hang out much. Loops was only down there for one year, and they weren't buddies. I'm like, trust me. You and fucking PA are going to get along just fine. And like a month in, he texts me, him and Lucia, like, but just talk about your time there, Mago. You had a great year. Um, it's got to be another place that I wish I would have played. I grew up a Leafs fan, as you know. It must have been awesome playing there. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I thought it was a really good organization. Uh, obviously, it was kind of a transition year there. Like, we were we were pretty bad. It was the year after they drafted Matthews. But um, Lou, Lou was there. He was, you know. He was doing his thing. Babs, Babs was there. I thought it was going to be really hard to play for Babs. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, everything I was hearing was just like, oh boy, not my style. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? We got along really well, me and Babs, and he uh, he played he played the shit out of me, and I had a really good year, and he, he was using me like you know <laughs> the way every every offensive player wants to be used, and I think that's one of his strengths. I think he uh, he knows what he can bring to the table, and he uh, you know he uses you like in. And he does ask a lot out of you, but you know if you deliver, you will play, and you you will be in his on his good side. Um, and I, I'm 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 looking forward to see if he's gonna get another gig. I'm, I'm really 
I'm really curious. What do you guys think? I say no we, chance. Yeah, we don't know. We, no we chance, handle those eh? young guys. Well, I, mean, I shouldn't say no chance. I think every who knows. But like the way you handle the way he, the stories, the rumors that came out, the way he handled those young guys in Toronto, I just don't see how teams are gonna be able to hire him back. But now, what's he coaching college kids? So maybe he's trying to go and learn and to adjust. But uh, I, mm-hmm. I think it's gonna be tough for him to come back with that uh, reputation. I think it'd be the remedy for Buffalo. <laughs> Let's write that up really quick. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Buffalo, huh? I, I like the city of Buffalo oh, too. I used boy. to love going in there, the old Chippewa <laughs> Street, and getting pinned. But Mago, tell the boys a story. <laughs> tell the boys a story about when you're going to get your big ticket in Colorado, and you called me up. I was on the golf course. I'll never forget this. Yeah, I'll never forget that either. I just came. I came out of a seventy-point season in Long Island playing with Johnny T. And I knew I was gonna. I knew I was gonna sign a pretty good ticket that summer. I was so excited, and there was a few offers. But the night before, I kind of knew I was gonna sign in Denver because they, they they had the best offer on the table, and I knew you were there. Also. <laughs> and I was like, hmm, should I do that or should I not? <laughs> and I did. <laughs> I told you, I'm like, oh, but I'm going to Denver. I get the best offer. He's like, no. I go, no, no way. you're not. I'm like, I'm telling you, you'll see them all when you get up. I'm coming to see him. And then I sure said, enough, sign in Denver, four years. Lasted only two. I know. Oh, fuck, I know. I, th- we, I, had a, I just signed a. Th- I had just signed a three-year deal before UFA, so I had a three-year ticket. You called me up. You're like, well, I signed a four-year deal. The only thing, the only guy that was holding out at the time was Ryan O'Reilly. Ryan O'Reilly. Other than that, Mango, we were like, this is going to be a nice little three or four years. And I just remember the one time turning to you after the game or whatever on the plane. I'm like, are we going too hard, Mango? You think off the ice a little bit? You think we're going a little too hard? And you're like. Yeah, we might, or whatever. It was just, it, it didn't work out the way we wanted to. But that second year after I got traded, you guys had a great year when you guys made the playoffs under uh, Patty Wall, right? Yeah, yeah. Patty Wall. Patty yeah, Wall. Yeah. We had a, yeah, we had a really good year that year. I, uh, I got hurt quite a bit that year too, but uh, no, yeah, we turned it around. Like, Barlamov was on fire. We picked up McKinnon. He was playing good hockey. We were, we were much better the second year, but. I had more fun the first year. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like playing? That I always, was a lockout year. I, I always wondered about Patty Watt. I knew I was I knew I was fucking getting dealt when I've, I was texting the boys. You know when a new coach comes in, you're like, hey, have you heard from the coach, right? So I was going down the depth chart, right? Yeah. I'm like, all right, well, he's yeah. still at the fucking... <laughs> and then at Bordelow, I text... Everyone heard, from, everyone heard from the new coach but you. <laughs> yeah, and then I go to Patrick Bordelow. I go, Bordelow, you heard from Patty Watt? He's like, oh, yeah, I talked to him yesterday. I'm like, I'm out of here. Yeah. Fuck, that's it. If, if he's <laughs> <laughs> that guy was so tough, Obes. Oh, buddy. P.A., do you remember this? So, Bordalo, he he finally makes the show. He's making 575, right? Comes in, has a great year that year, <laughs> hanging out with me and the Mago. And he fights bigger and twice, fights everyone. So, then he has an offer for three years, oh. three, three bananas, a million bucks a year. And he calls me up and he's like, you think I should take, you think I should take this? I went, well, see how you're making 47,000 two years ago. I think you should maybe jump on this contract, buddy. But he he was a great team. He was a great, he was a great teammate. You should jump on it and you should jump on it and frame it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I got to tell one story here about PA in, in Denver. So I was in the doghouse shockingly with Joe Sacco but, no. <laughs> but, but PA Pronto was running our team which was the only probably highlight throughout that career for me right I was like at least PA's having a good year and he's as much as Joe Sacco and Dave Quinn are running my show PA's running it right back so I'm gonna tell two stories the first story was on the power play and I hadn't had a power play shift all fucking year and our D wasn't that good. So fucking Maddie Hunwick was on the power play. <laughs> PA yells down the bench. He's like, get this fucking guy off the power play, would you? And sure enough, next shift I jumped on there and we sniped one in Columbus. So that, I think that was maybe my first and only power play shift, Maggle. But the other one I wanted to tell was we're driving to the rink. We stayed up fucking, I don't even know. This is bad to say. We stayed up late. I probably shouldn't have been driving the rink, but we're driving the rink and I'm like, PA's like, there's no way I'm practicing today. There's no fucking way I'm practicing OBS. I'm like, come on, man. You got to like, no fucking chance. So he gets to the rink. He tells Maddie, our trainer, he's like, yeah, fuck, I took a puck yesterday in the hand or a stick. So now he's walking around in the lounge with it on his left hand, drinking coffee, watching highlights, big smile on his face. I'm like going to get dressed. I come in after a 40 minute, whatever, pretty tough skate or whatever, come in and he's sitting in the same spot, but he's got the ice bag instead of on his left hand, he's got it on his right hand. I'm like, hey, Mago, wrong hand, buddy. He's like, oh, fuck, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, PA, 
Your old your old man Jill oh, likes the oh, likes Jill. the fa likes the father's trips. Um, I was oh, told yeah. I was told a story where he got caught in the dressing room trying to steal some so <laughs> some sock tape for <laughs> for the summer. And then, can you tell that? And then did he? I think it's after it. That's hilarious. But do you, do you remember that? So, oh yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so Loops Lube, told me. Loops told me the story. You heard you heard that from Loops. Yeah, sure. I sure did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's Loopy for sure. Yeah, I remember. I think all the dads were in the locker room. They were like, half in the bag. I think we just beat the Panthers and it was party in the room. And I think I think Loops saw my dad. Like, yeah, all all the suck tape loaded in his in his jacket. And, like. <laughs> It was, it was crazy. I didn't see it, but Luke told me at the bar after. I was like, no. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> and then we, it was a fun road trip with the dad that year. Did we, no, I don't think you guys were in Florida anymore. But no, yeah. No, no. Luke goes, that was cool. PA, look at fucking Jill over there. He's stealing all the, or, or yeah, you're like, Luke, look at my yeah, dad. Yeah. Fuck, he's stealing all the sock tape. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, it's funny shit. But, Broadway, you got anything, you got anything oh, else from Mango? Yeah, PA, I just wanted to, I was going through, like you said, we, you, you played for a lot of teams, and then that last stop I saw on that hockey DB was over in the KHL for three games. What was that yeah. experience like, and what were you doing over there? <laughs> Most importantly, what was I doing over there? Well, <laughs> fucking drinking. They, they what me, it was the it was the Olympic year that non NHLer could make the oh, yeah, yeah. the Olympic. I oh. just I just retired, so I thought I was had a good chance to make the team, but I was so out of shape. In my, in my mind, I was already retired, right? <laughs> and this team from Russia called me. They're like, can you come here for four months to play? And they could say, no, the money was too good. I'm like, so I look at my family. I'm like, yeah, I'm going. Like, I, four months for that kind of money, I, I, I'm going to go. What a grind that was. <laughs> oh, my God, that place is a nightmare, dude. Like, everything's brown. They're 40, 40 years behind. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Uh, I never. That's even, a good start. Is that's the rushing gas about. like? Is that true? Like the people? Oh, that's that shit? yeah. That, that that's true. Everything you hear is true there, which is amazing. You don't even need to think about it. Everything you hear coming from there is exactly how it is. I was playing. <laughs> what, what, what you're? I was playing in Austria, and you were texting me, so we were kind of on the same time thing. And I just remember you texting yeah. me, Mango, being like, "Oh, this is fucking," like you said, "I fucking grind," but. And then, the, oh, yeah. then they snubbed you. Then they snubbed you on the Olympic team too, which I thought was a joke. Yeah, me too. Anyways, but that's okay. I went to the Spengler Cup. I won the Spengler Cup the year before you, Uppy. Yeah, Same hey, that's up. how you I, go out I, swinging I right there. When I saw you right in the Spengler Cup, I saw my I saw myself <laughs> a year before, just over like that's great. <laughs> over doing it, thinking oh. you're the shit, you're <laughs> overdoing <laughs> it. Uh, it was. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it was great. How fun was that? That's an incredible Spengler tournament. Cup? Yeah, yeah. I, th I think you experience. actually won it two years before me because they lost the year before. They lost the year before in a shootout. Okay, I think. okay. Yeah. Um, okay. But it's a great tourney. It's. I mean, you ski. Yeah, the family. You stay at that yeah, one. You ski. Yeah, <laughs> you, you ski. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 yeah. It's, it's, oh yeah. It's, it's, hell, during the well, tournament, you're, you're skiing. Hundred yeah, yeah. percent. Yeah. If you're an NHLer, you don't really care, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you're a guy from Europe, you don't ski. Yeah. Me and, <laughs> hey, me and Paul Coffey were up in the slopes. League, you don't ski. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't ski. <laughs> um, no, it's Team Canada does does things, you know, so first class, and that that's that's one of the best terms. Oh, crazy. I tell everyone, and I actually said it for years. I don't know if you thought the same, but I'm like, when I'm done playing, I'm going over to Switzerland. I'm playing in that stupid Spengler Cup. I'm gonna have a blast. And that was, uh, that yeah. was a good yeah. way to close it. Was it was in my mind. It was in yeah. my mind towards the end of my career, too. I'm like, why not? You know, I heard so many good things. Davos is spectacular. Yeah. Man. Like, this yeah. place is just top notch. <laughs> like, I want to go back there on a trip. And Yeah, yeah, for sure. We'll see. PA, buddy, I absolutely love you, buddy. You're my, one of my favorites all time. We grew up together. I met you when we were 20 years old, and uh, we kind of grew up those three years, good and bad, off the ice. Um, whenever you can come out here, buddy, we want you out here in the studio. We'll play some golf. Um, thank you for doing this, buddy. I, I truly love you, and you're one of my favorite teammates of all time, Maggle. Thank you. Right back at you, buddy. All right. Thanks, Phil.